Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I've got a special for you guys. A lot of people have been asking me about tools, what tools do I use, what do I recommend? We're gonna cover that today. Because today we're gonna go over what I call a 90% bag. And the reason I call it a 90 bag is because 90% of the problems you run into, you're gonna be able to solve with what we have here. So let's take a look and see what we got. So all these tools right here amount to just a couple hundred dollars, really. Most expensive thing is obviously the meter. But let's take a look and see what I consider a standard tool bag. You have your standard screwdrivers. No matter what, you're gonna use them for prying on things, you're gonna use them sometimes as a chisel, you're gonna use them uh, in the field for random stuff. I do all the time, not necessarily always for screws, you can see I've got a large flat blade, a small flat blade. I got a number one Phillips, a number two Phillips, and I choose to keep the, sh the shorty on there because we have other options. A small hammer. This is not that big. You can notice I get mine from Harbor Freight. Fiberglass handle. The whole purpose of this 90 bag is to keep things as light as possible and use things for multiple purposes. Now this guy here, sometimes I use this for bending shrouds that are on uh, stainless steel uh, surgical tables. Sometimes you have to like use it as a prop to prop something up. I've done all sorts of stuff with this little hammer. It fits in my tool bag and it's not too heavy. That's the key people, not too heavy. You can see I just got generic, regular, cheapo brand, standard and metric, SAE and metric Allens. In one of my other videos, I covered this right here. This is the 35 piece Craftsman tool set. Fits nicely in the bottom of the tool bag. I have the metric add-ons and a tiny little extension and I also have a number two Phillips right here. This guy, haven't seen this in a while. This is in one of my videos. You can see all I gotta do is pull on this collar and it changes its length. This is such an awesome multi-purpose screwdriver. You never know what you're going to use it with, and you can use it with all these bits. And speaking of bits, look what I got right here. I have some long Torx. I think I got those at Harbor Freight. I have some long Phillips, some long Allens. I've got a whole bunch of stuff, a uh, couple of these guys in here. But bits, bits are the secret because bits, you don't have to have the whole entire driver in there. Could you imagine keeping a whole entire set of Torx in your tool bag? Not gonna happen, but I have a whole set of them right here. I also have, uh, that's a deep pinning tool. You can see I have some Loctite in there. And this is just a quick fold, easy pack up and go kit. See that? Goes right in my tool bag. I have a stainless steel wire brush very important to have stainless steel and I also usually have a, a brass brush because stainless steel will scratch pretty much anything. So sometimes you have rust and you need to clean it off. Brass will not do that. However, this one here is a stainless steel. This one will, it will scratch surfaces but it will get rust off and that's very important. So I have a brass brush in my tool bag but we're not going to go over that here. I have two types of nylon bristle brushes. You're gonna use them for cleaning, fans, all sorts of stuff. You're gonna use those quite a bit. And while we're on the topic of using bits, I went over this in another video. This is a Craftsman four volt electric driver. It rotates based on your wrist. This guy is awesome because look at its size. It fits in my tool bag and it's got a light. So it's kind of a multi-purpose thing. If you need a flashlight, you can just grab this. Just hit the button, it'll stay on for quite a bit of time. I also have a flashlight right there. A bit extension. So I can extend from my motorized driver or I can extend any of these. So this guy here doesn't weigh very much. Also goes in my tool bag. Let's get to the pliers. This is where multifunction really shines. I have a set of flush cutters right here. You can see that, an absolute must. 
These ones here are wire strippers, but they're multifunction wire strippers. You see down here, I've got crimps, so I can do crimps if I need to. And right here is a fastener cutoff tool. All these ones in the middle, that's so you can cut off fasteners. And this right here is a very important tool that I also use. This is a uh, large gauge wire stripper or cutter. See those blades right there? Multifunction tool and it's super lightweight. So it's going in my tool bag. Now the heavy items in my tool bag, you just gotta have them. You're, that's just the way it is. So you can see here, I have a set of channel locks, but you can also use Nipex, adjustable pliers, and I also have right here, needle nose vice grips. One of my most heavily used tools, needle nose vice grips, if you round off a fastener or whatever, or you need something to be held down while you screw it down, needle nose vice grips, awesome tool. Right here, I have my Fluke voltage detector. Now this is a, a safety tool and it's a functional tool. You can use it for troubleshooting to see where you lost AC power, or you can use it as a safety tool to make sure circuits are de-energized before you work on anything. That's a good tool. It doesn't weigh very much, fits handily in your bag. I highly suggest these little Fluke Volt Alert. That's his name, Fluke Volt Alert. Gloves, always have gloves in my tool bag, every single time. Teflon tape, Teflon tape. We use them for water sources, for doing plumbing. We use it for vacuum. We use it for pressure lines. We use Teflon tape quite a bit and it's very lightweight. It fits in the tool bag. I highly suggest people keep that in your tool bag. Safety glasses, of course. Anybody that's ever worked underneath the surgical table or up near the ceiling, got a bunch of garbage in your eye, you wish you had safety glasses. These have a special pocket in my tool bag. They fit right in there, nice and well. Ear protection. Notice I have a clean set right here. That goes in my tool bag, and when I use them, I'll clean them out and whatnot, but I'll almost always keep a spare set in my tool bag for somebody else if I'm beating on something. This guy right here. Technicians need to have Loctite, specifically Loctite Blue. Keep a Loctite in your tool bag. This right here is one of the most essential tools out of this whole kit. Use Loctite. That way there you don't get repeat work orders. You notice I also have two different sizes of zip ties and big bags of them. I use zip ties. I always say if technicians don't use zip ties or if they don't have them in their tool bag, they're probably not a very good technician. Keep zip ties in your tool bag. Guaranteed you're gonna use them, and you should. The last entire piece of this whole mess is gonna be a generic fluke. I got a 175 meter here, and notice that I have jumpers. These are a safety issue, because you're not supposed to hold two probes across your heart, so in case you energize a piece of equipment, you get electrocuted, now you have current going across your heart, so what I do is I keep these guys, you wind them up in a tight little ball in your tool bag, fit them in a, in a pouch. You can clip it onto one of your leads and clip that to common and you clip the other one on hot and you can clip it to the circuit. So when you hit power on the questionable device, you can read your meter without having to actually be there holding it. That's the worst case scenario is you sitting there holding this on a circuit when it goes live. These jumper wires here I got at Harbor Freight they come in a pack of like 10, they're super cheap, very handy. Jumper wires, I highly suggest you guys get those. You can use them for multiple reasons, jumper wires. So anyway guys, that is pretty much the entirety of a 90% tool bag. I can do 90% of all the repairs on all the medical equipment that I see with what you see here. Now for that other 10%, I have specialty tools back in my shop and I went over that in another video. We'll go over some of those specialty tools again because I've got a couple new additions, but these are lightweight, they have multi-purposes, and they have a place in this tiny little bag that's lightweight and easy to carry around. So guys, that's all I have for you. That is a 90% tool bag. It fits in a generic $10 tool bag, very easy, very cheap, very durable. And these things, it's probably what? maybe a couple hundred bucks, maybe $200 worth of tools, and that solves most of your problems. So that's what I keep 
in my tool bag. I do have some extra stuff, but that's because I do some extra functions on top of general biomed. But that is 90% of what I have in my tool bag. Thanks for watching, guys.